attacking shape. But a poor pass from Collins, intercepted. Here's Gressel with the service. It deflects it off of one hop. Piece of the ball. Here's a half volley, and it's saved off the line by DC United. Things to think about if that deal does uh, consummate. Here's Schrade on the dribble, creates the 2v1. Back to Gray. Gray looking to whip it across. It floats to the back post. Castellanos goes high, and uh, it looks like that one actually uh, went out for the gold kick. Start by Sands. Here's Tavon Gray once again. Gray puts on the Jets and uh, again uh, draws uh, this time a corner. So Gray pivot. And, and, you know, what a versatile player. I mean, look, U17 center back in the World Cup. Here's a shot and it misses wide. That's Shradi on the angle dribbled and tried to get it on frame. Need to strike. Here's Goody. Goody's cross high and floating and a sidewinding shot is headed. Uh, headed clear by Frederick Brillon and out for the corner. United. As Flores off the short corner. His switch. Here's three on one for New York City on the counter. Morales running with Goody and Castellanos to his right. He'll reverse to Goody. It's on his favorite left. He's going to go to Castellanos. First time shot is a goal. And New York City opens up the scoring here against DC United in Chester, Pennsylvania. It's New York City one and DC United nothing. In the 27th minute, a great counterattack for New York City, led by Morales, a great recovery by Sands. Here's the through ball, and it's Flores. Flores on the left boot. He'll pull it back, and the shot is a goal! And the rookie, Smith, was able to get a piece of it in between Collins and Ibiaga, and we're tied at one. In the As you saw last year, that there was a lot of guys who just continued to play and play and play. Meanwhile, Tate Castellanos took a shot to the face and he's hurt and he's rolling around and hopefully he's okay. Goody uh, Thorarensen. Goody now bends a nice service into Castellanos and Tati uh, unable to judge that. I think he was in between two thoughts of maybe trying to head the ball and then at the last minute decided maybe to volley it. Uh, nonetheless, it skipped past him and it's a New York City throw. Well, he already had DC one United. volley like that that he was able to put on goal, and he tried for number two, but yes, I agree with you. I think he was between two minds, and then by the time he decided that he was going to volley it in as well for Goody, we'll see. Uh, all those on uh, my podcast on frame. Oof. And uh, Castellanos down again. And uh, there's a... Oh, Castellanos uh, is well, hurt, and now they're going... A Knauss just a, got red Is that a red card? No, yellow. Yeah, it no. is a red card. Russell Knauss, somebody got red carded. I think it's Knauss. It might be Castellanos. Castellanos, Castellanos has down. to be pulled off. One of the players for DC, Briant now is being pulled off. To, to Drew Schrade, who's wearing 17 this year. Medina, who goes to the striker position. So here's the example of New York City uh, without a second true number nine and, and what they might be able to do with it. Nice ball from James Sands finding Schrade. Schrade deep on the right side, gets it to the favored left, tries to drive it across. It's uh, blocked into touch. And there is the halftime whistle. James Sands in the midfield, Santi Rodriguez, Maxi Morales, Jesus Medina, Tati Castellanos, and off the corner, it's a goal! New York City, Brad Guzan beat. What a moment for New York City FC. They played the short corner, Maxi Morales, and who other than Tati Castellanos on the volley. He clipped it poorly, hit it right into the ground, but it bounded over the head of Brad Guzan to open the scoring. Just a couple of minutes into the second half, it's New York City one, Atlanta United nil. And here's a shot off the bar, the follows a goal! New York City makes it two now! This time it's Alexander Collins on the rebound! Collins who is questionable for this game! Medina unleashing the corner, hit it low! Ball dropped back to Morales, he hit it off the bar and there was Collins to knot it into an empty net. And New York City, perhaps on their way to a conference semifinal against New England. Plenty of time left. But it's New York City 2, Atlanta United 0.
scored a goal against Atlanta in the 2-0 win. Here's a shot from deep. The rebound, no. Stairs, Maxi Morales, and he scores the equalizer. New York City answers within two minutes. Maxi Morales on the rebound. It's 1-1 in the Eastern Conference Final. Fenty Rodriguez found Chano. Shradi, he was there to keep it alive. And then a side volley by Maxi Morales from about 10 yards out. Ah, check that. It's inside the six-yard box by Morales. And New York City, what a quick answer against the Union. Edge of the circle, Philadelphia side of the pitch. Maxi now will drive it to the left. Well-placed ball, Baizo there, so is Goody. Goody has some room, here's Magno! It's the go-ahead goal from Goodmunder to Aronson! It's 2-1 New York City FC! With only two minutes left in regulation in the Eastern Conference Final! You wonder, will that be the moment that sends New York City to their first MLS Cup Final? And it's Tylus Magno! The reserve striker here in the second half! Well, there it is! The final whistle! And New York City, in its seventh year as a franchise, advances to its first MLS Cup. They will play the Portland Timbers on Saturday, December the 11th, at Providence Park in Portland. After coming from behind at Subaru Park in Chester, Pennsylvania, down 1-0, New York City recovers in the second half for the 2-1 win. Tylus Magno, the 18-year-old Brazilian transfer from Goody Terrarinson with the game-winning goal in the 88th minute. And it's New York City celebrating another fantastic moment in their history. Hello, everybody. I'm Dean Linky. Delighted to be with former Rutgers women's soccer coach Glenn Crooks. Glenn, great to be with you. And both these teams feeling some pretty good mojo, some big time victories. Huge wins for both. You've got the Big Ten opener for Ohio State and getting the single goal, one goal victory. And uh, Penn State, it was a non conference game, but they waited a little later, the second overtime, for their one goal victory. Dramatic goals. Let's not just talk about them, let's show them to you. Led by Hunter Robertson and the Ohio State Buckeyes. This is a rehearsed play. Robinson coming in from deep and late. And look at that drive. Here's a guy that's played at the back almost every game since his freshman year. His first career goal. And then Penn State with just 30 seconds left in double overtime. Well, Mikey Kona got loose on the flank and a great pullback finding Christian Slowed. And there you see the celebration. Penn State celebrating there. They hope to celebrate in Columbus, Ohio. But I buy that back line, it's low. And on that goal, the relationship between Slowed and Ethan Beckford, the two front runners. Beckford actually letting the ball run past him on the uh, the service in by Kona and that dummy led to a free shot for slow that's the kind of relationship you expect out of your front runners there's one of the front runners Ethan Beckford the and Bob Warming is concerned about set pieces against Ohio State because of the fact that they are gigantic including that man right there number eight Michael Prozik. Well, they should be concerned, and I'm certain it's something they addressed after the St. Francis game. St. Francis had three excellent opportunities, two real clear-cut chances on goals off of set pieces, a corner kick and, and two from uh, outside the area. So uh, you add into that the, uh, the height advantage for Ohio State, and it's a legitimate concern. Muhammad driven in again. <laughs> Neither time did he try to loop it to the height of Ohio State. I think that'll be okay with Bob Warming. We'll see if John Bloom wants to make an adjustment on those free kicks when they go in at halftime. Give credit to Evan Finney, and I, I think it was wise the way he took it, Dean, because the conditions say it's going to skip. So now he's going to hit it firm, which he did, and he was hoping for the skip. So Finney reading it well, and no spillage, no rebound. Really well done by Finney. I remember talking to Bob Warman before uh, they met Ohio State in the 2015 quarterfinals of the Big Ten Tournament. They had played in the regular season, and he uh, kiddingly said there were a million fouls in the game. It turned out there were 47 fouls, seven yellow cards, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's uh, sometimes the type of match you get between these two. 
he's got 1v1 quality. So here's you got you have a fullback that loves getting into the final third. And one thing I noticed in their game against Northwestern is there was a reluctance to take on the player when he was isolated, but not on that occasion. Perhaps it was discussed. John, it's uh, Glenn. I, I wonder, you know, part of your uh, mantra is to be precise in front of the goal. Is that one of the things that uh, you, you mentioned at halftime? Well, we got, we got it. This is the New York City FC pregame live. Tonight, New York City look to bring home their first trophy of the year as they host Atlas in the Campiones Cup. And now... Here are your hosts, Glenn Crooks and Maddie Lawrence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, where's Maddie? He didn't make it in yet. He is stuck at the gate. Uh, these things happen sometimes, especially at Yankee Stadium. But hopefully, Maddie will uh, sneak through the turnstile and uh, get up here before uh, we conclude our New York City FC pregame live. I'm Glenn Crooks. Maddie Lawrence and I will have the live commentary for you of the Campionas Cup, the MLS Cup champions of 2021, New York City FC, against the uh, Liga MX champions, also of 21, winning both seasons, which is not common, and that's Atlas FC, we're at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. It's a 7.45 kickoff. Uh, our pregame starts at 7.15. And then we've got a, a, a good interview with uh, Nick Cushing, the interim manager for New York City FC, as part of our pregame show presented by Ford. So New York City and Atlas, they're defending champions in their leagues, but their form right now uh, equally poor, I guess you'd have to say. Each of them with just one victory in their last 10 league matches with New York City coming off the most recent game, a 1-0 defeat at Charlotte. So the expansion side, Charlotte FC, sweeping the season series from New York City FC. It's the first game at Yankee Stadium, first home game at Yankee Stadium for New York City FC since July the 23rd. That was the Tati Castellanos farewell match, a 2-0 win over Inter-Miami. So they're back uh, in these friendly confines where New York City this year has a 6-2-1 and one record. Now, uh, before we get into the meat of things, uh, and, and Maddie Lawrence, and that's why I want Maddie to be here because he's the one that uh, sent me this yesterday. He, he, it was a tweet from UK NYC FC. And if you see at the bottom, it says Heathrow Airport, and there's the passport, and there, of course, is the pint. How could you not have the pint to get ready for the flight overseas? And uh, you'd have to say that this guy is, uh, if, if there ever were a, uh, a super fan, this is a guy who has crossed the pond to come to the Campionas Cup and then also the Hudson River Derby back here at Yankee Stadium on a Saturday. His name is Andrew Barnard, and there he is. He said... People call me Barney. What is happening? How are you? Very good, Dan. Thank you for having me. Hope you're well, too. Well, listen, I, I want to hear your story because I, I, I know you've kind of followed us and, and followed me on Twitter, and, and uh, you're very active, and you're, you're always uh, waiting for more information. You know, you're just such a, such a fan of the team. So just tell us how this, uh, how this support started. Did it start with Manchester City? or Because you're a Portsmouth fan. You're not, you're not like a, a City fan to begin with, right? Right, yeah. So uh, I have the smallest link to Man City. Uh, my brother-in-law was a Man City fan. He took me to my first ever Premier League game like 